Hello again. We start a new show with a lot of enthusiasm because today our main subject is humor. That's why we've invited two people who work on humor from different perspectives. The amazing Rachel Iriev and hilarious Sergi Sorvera. We also have here with us a chef with a very good sense of humor, although he's not here to make us laugh, but to make a special waffle. I bet our craziest character, Mark Broderick, will tell us a joke about Irish people. All these and more in the good company of our wonderful host, Marcella Topor. Welcome to the Weekly Mag. Today we are, well, very happy because the main issue of the program is humour. We will talk to professional comedians, discuss the limits of humour and meet interesting people related to this topic. And the first one we are going to talk to is, of course, our very own funny guy, Mark Broderick. Hey, Mark. How's she cutting? Excuse me? How's she cutting? How's she cutting? Yeah, it's, well, um, it's another way in Ireland of saying hello. And I oh, thought, right. you know, keep another... your English up and running. <laughs> um, Another of your own expressions, Irish exactly. expressions from the countryside. Exactly. And I'm also, thank you for referring to me as a professional comedian. It's the first time anybody has ever asked. No, said I said to our funny guy. Ah, okay. Mm? Well, I Okay, but you're getting there. I'm getting there. I'm, I'm sure you'll there. get there. Yes. Anyway, uh, today is a good start. Okay. Um, what shall we start with? What well, have you prepared for us? It's humor, and I guess I've prepared some of my favorite jokes. And yes. some, well, we're going to talk a little bit about humor and stuff, but we're, I think we're going to start off the show with a joke today. I always bring you something. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring you a joke that I laughed so hard at I almost peed my pants. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, so, that's a good start. <laughs> let's, uh, let's hear it. Okay. So there's a man, and he's sitting on his couch. He's sitting like this, okay? And all of a sudden, he hears a knock on the door. Okay, and he goes to the door, and he opens the door, and he sees a snail on the ground. And he picks up the snail, and he throws it away, and he goes back in and sits down, okay? Three years later, the man is sitting in the couch again, and he hears the door. And he opens the door, and the snail looks up at him, and he goes, what the hell did you do that for? <laughs> okay. <laughs> is that the end of the joke? I also bought an apparatus in case that you didn't laugh at my joke, oh, that I had somebody well, who would. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good idea, actually. Shall we watch the video? Yeah, sure. Go Excellent. for it. Okay, so we're here today to talk about humor. In Ireland, the funniest things we can talk about are God, sorry God, and the Catholic Church. In Catalonia, well, I decided to call in an expert. Kim, what do you guys laugh about? Me, hey, all down. He doesn't speak any English. I don't think this is going to work, Danny. No! <laughs> okay. Today we're in Sardinola del Valles. What's the most inappropriate thing that's funny? Uh, my dad sending me videos on WhatsApp of like transgender people naked. For example, <laughs> and that's like something normal here. That's something that everybody does. And it's like, oh, look at this video. Oh, look at the black guy from What's Up. And it's like, holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Some moment that you laughed and you shouldn't have laughed. When you go to the funeral home and someone explains a joke and you start to laugh and you say, I can laugh here. When my grandmother's death, the priest started uh, talking about my grandma, and I said. You, you don't know anything about uh, her. When you see someone walking down the street and this person is like falling down and you say... Is there anything that you shouldn't laugh at? No. I think there's inappropriate times to laugh at certain things, but I don't think anything is off limits. You shouldn't laugh at that person. If that's going to create something bad or like some... They're going to have a, a hard time. A racism. Machism and something like this. Nowadays it's so... It's so difficult to talk about it with humor and that people don't get, like... Triggered. You know? Yeah. Right now, politics is a quite a dangerous uh, topic to, to deal with. You might, you, you might end up in jail, you no, for what you say? More or less. Oh, yeah. What is a typical thing that makes Catalans laugh? Shit. 
things um, about sex or something like that. Have you ever laughed during sex? Yes. At least you didn't laugh at the size of him. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. What makes you laugh? Uh, intelligent. Uh, it's witty humor. What is Catalan humor for you? Wit, spark, brilliant. <laughs> yes, <laughs> intelligent. Yes. Can you tell me a joke that's funny? What does the cow say? I don't know. What does the cow say? Oh, sorry. It's drink. And what does the... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> How do you put a baby in a blender? Like, with the head up or the head down? I don't know. With the head up, so you can see his face when you push the start button. <laughs> That's that was both crude and offensive. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to stop here. <laughs> Catalan humor is way too intelligent for a simple minded man from Ireland. What do you think? Absolutely. I've got to go. That was supposed to be funny. But it seems I don't understand Catalan humor. Oh well. Well, not bad. Mm? I was expecting something worse, in fact. I still don't understand Catalan humor and I've been here for 10 years. Mm. And why is that? Because as I said, I think it's just when you learn a language, humor is one of the last things that you begin to understand. Mm, I agree. And that's the last serious thing I'm going to tell you right now. Mm. Let's uh, see. <laughs> so, as you saw from the video, right, it was, it was, we talked about like a different sense of humor and, and different things that make people laugh. Okay, and as we said, no, the Catalans, we said they laugh at very intelligent, witty, and all of these wonderful things. But I actually did research this week as well, as trying to find things to make people laugh. And I found out that there are nine different types of sense of humor. Would you like to know what they are? Sure. I'll give you an I've example of them. I've heard that before. Well, I'll give you an example as well mm. along the way for some of them, not all of them. So, number one, you have the physical type of humor, no? This kind of like slapstick comedy, like Laurel and Hardy. Do you know Laurel and Hardy? Mm -hmm or the Three Stooges, something like this. And then you have like this self-deprecating humor, yes. which is something that I do on a weekly basis for the weekly mag. <laughs> I constantly make fun of myself and I'm always the butt of every joke here. Hmm. Well, not bad. You're doing that very well. Uh, the number three is the surreal, okay? You have like Monty Python. You guys have Monty Python here, no? This kind of surreal uh, humor. Improvisational, which is something I also do all the time on the streets mm -hmm. with no preparation. And then you have Witty wordplay, and I actually have a joke for you on this one. It's very short. Okay, let's um, get ready. Okay, so case. there's a Spanish magician, and he comes onto the stage, and he says, on the count of three, I'm going to disappear. Okay? One, two, <laughs> kazam. Oy. The magician disappeared <laughs> without a trace. Trace, trace. Okay. No. Okay. okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, that one didn't work out very well. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, then... but humor is a very serious business. Oh, hold on. Hold that thought. Hold that thought, right? Num number six is topical, right? You can hold that because we'll Are talk sure about that in a number second. Six? Number six is tip topical, like Polonia, Saturday Night Live, things like this. Observational, making fun of everyday life. Yes. Bodily, which is the typical belching, uh, silly. Uh, jokes that people make about uh, bodily functions. And then there are uh, the dark humor. The dark humor, yeah. yeah this is where this you is say um, things get serious, no? Mm. And people laugh at really serious issues. That's very British as well, no? It is. I have a real uh, dark humor. Uh, I have a dark joke, but I'm not sure. It. I think I might skip it because I think we've already seen one on the video. <laughs> so I, I don't okay, want you yeah, to... Yeah, that was terrible, yeah? I think I, I don't think you, you want the me to... The joke about the baby, you mean? Yes, yeah, I let's, agree. Let's it move, let's move dark humor. swiftly along, as mm. they say. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, uh, tell me about... Um, um, Catalan humor. Yeah. Uh, compared to to Irish humor. That's actually. Which is where you're from. Do you find there are any similarities? Yeah, I do. There are some similarities. I mean, in Ireland we laugh about Paddy Englishman, Paddy Irishman, and Paddy Scotsman. And also here, you guys make jokes that I've heard a few times about the Andalusian, and the Catalan, and the Basque. Have you heard of this one? The bear and the mountain. Might be a bit too long, actually. <laughs> yes. You also make jokes of people from Lepe. 
in Spain. And in Ireland, we make jokes of people from Kerry. Yes, the what's the thing with the people from County... From County, County Kerry. County Kerry, no? Uh, yeah, like for example, what's the Kerry man's latest invention? No idea. An underwater hairdryer. <laughs> Is that a... That was hilarious. No, hilarious that wasn't very good. funny. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So we, we've uh, found out uh, very successfully about uh, how many are they? Nine uh, types of Nine types of humor, humor yeah. Okay, which is very um, um, enriching. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Finally, I've done yes. something right in this mm -hmm. program. Thanks, it's well, great. Well, you know, it's better, you know what they say, it's better later than never. Uh, better Mark, late than never. So. Exactly. I have one last thing for you before I let you go, okay? Because I thought this one was really interesting. And it's the way that people laugh in different countries. Okay? Uh-huh. What's the wow. we're gonna start it very quickly. What's the funniest fruit in Spain? The naranja. I'm uh, I'm uh, I have no idea. Okay. I don't have a clue. The naranja ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Exactly. And this is something that everybody uses in their WhatsApp messages. So I've prepared you a set of cards, okay, and I want you to tell me which country that they come from. This one? All those, I think somebody didn't print the last ah, but ha ha. Um, the, the, uh, is that from uh, Ireland? Well done. Or America, English speaking world. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. This one I particularly like. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, uh, sorry. I don't know. No? That one. No. Our friend Silvio Berlusconi, would that give you a, a hint? Okay, I see. Yeah, where is it from? Okay, Italy. Oh, well done. A little bit of culture as well along the way. <laughs> oh, come on. This one, uh, this is not a symbol, before we show this one, of anything that sh it shouldn't be. Mm, I see. I don't know. A hint. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> any any ideas? K-pop? Kim uh, Jong-un? 45% of the population are Korea. called Park. Okay, okay. Their pastime Korea. is parking cars. Yes. Uh, These ones are too difficult. I mean, it's impossible for me to know these things. I know. I have two more, okay? I this, is, this, this, this is the, 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 the penultimate one. Mm -hmm. I don't wow, know. Don't wow, tell me this is wow. from like the, the most remote country in the world. No. It's from one of the most technologically advanced countries in the world. Oh. It actually makes sense that they Japan. would have W. Well, well done. Well okay. done. And finally, this one. It looks like a number for, you know, those late night numbers that you call when you're lonely at home. <laughs> it's funny, but I need another hint. Okay. Um, let me think. Where would you go if you wanted to lay on the beach under coconuts and have an experience that only Leonardo DiCaprio could, you know... An exotic probably. island? In which country? Tell us. Thailand. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, no. okay. Well, it. I'm not sure I'm going to remember any of these, but anyway, it's been, um, it's been uh, it's interesting. An enriching uh, experience? Uh, I'm not sure it's been enriching or funny, but uh, it's, been, it's been good. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mark, for your contribution to, uh, okay. to the program. Um, anyway, I'll see you uh, next week. Uh, this is the last here and there because next week we're going to have a special show because it's the last show of the season. So I'll see you then. All right, take care. Have fun. It's time to move on to something else. Let's hear a few vocabulary tips from our English teacher, Team Guinea. Here you have them. Today's topic is humour. And I hope you're going to find this video a bit funny or another word that we use to describe things that are funny is amusing. So amusing is something that makes you laugh or smile. Now, when we're talking about humour, of course, we have to start with the whole genre of comedy. Comedy is very funny or amusing. And there are different types depending on the intention of the speaker. So we have something called black humour. And black humour is when you use a dark situation or event and you make a joke from it. it. Helps you process things. Now, if something's very dark, it could be gallows humour. Now, gallows are the places where people used to be executed. So something very serious, even life-threatening, and you make a joke out of it, that would be gallows humour. But my personal preference is dry humour. And that's when someone makes a joke and they have a very serious expression on their face 
and you're not sure if they're actually joking or not, but it's usually very clever and very witty. Now, if someone wants to tell a joke, well, we use another verb. You can also crack a joke. And if you crack a joke and it goes over well, well, people call it hilarious. And that means very funny. So imagine someone has been telling some hilarious jokes and we're going to listen to some responses now. So these are different types of laughing and we're about to hear a girl. Take a listen. <laughs> <laughs> that girl was giggling. Now, there are different types of laughing as well. We can make it a bit bigger. Listen to this man. <laughs> he was chuckling, so a slightly bigger laugh. Now, if there's a bit of a nervous undercurrent to the laugh, maybe there'll be a titter. Take a listen. <laughs> and we can also have a big laugh, where people are laughing loudly because they find it so funny. This is called a guffaw. <laughs> so you just heard that woman guffawing, and I hope today's video made you at least giggle, if not chuckle, and you found it amusing. So until next time, I'll see you. Pinnock waffles with mackerel tartare. I know, it's a combination that blows your mind and in a few minutes, Roger Villaginez will teach us how to cook it. Charles Chaplin used to say, a day without laughter is a day wasted. And today in the Weekly Mag, we're going to talk to two experienced comedians about humour. Before I recommend you take a look at the following glossary, it contains some descriptions to help you understand the following interview. The first concept that will appear during the interview is high pitch. If something is high pitch, it means that this style is strident, lofty and rather intense. The second expression you need to know is laughing fit. When you watch a comic show and you continuously laugh uncontrollably, you have a laughing fit. Now a phrasal verb to pay attention to, to make up. If you make up something such as a tale, a story or even an excuse, you invent it. And the last word of today's glossary is uptight. An uptight person is someone who is overly conventional or strict. Rachel Ariaf began her career as a stand-up comedian in Austin, Texas. After a few years, she moved to New York and then to Los Angeles, where she performed on stage as much as she did on TV and in movies as well. In 2004, Rachel moved to Barcelona, where she enjoys a successful career as a writer, comedian and actress. Sergio Cervera was born in Barcelona. He is currently performing a musical called The Trumps in honor of Donald Trump's family. He has recently finished the shooting of a TV movie in Los Angeles, where he also lives and works. Well, Rachel uh, Ariaf, Sergio Cervera, welcome to the Weekly Mag. Thank you. Thank it's you a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, Rachel, let's start with you. A few months ago, you um, took your show American Dreams, Stories from the Great Empire, to Salabart. Yes. So what kind of stories do you tell in this show? Well, they're stories that tell the truth about the U.S. Um, we hear a lot of stories about the U.S. because we constantly see their series, we read the, their news ends up being our news, and um, it's, it's impossible to avoid it, knowing about the U.S., but a lot of the stuff that we hear about the U.S. is our myths, like it's the greatest country in the world, anyone can make it, anyone can be president, which if you look at the president now, it seems true, but um, generally there's a lot of, uh, storytelling that America tells about itself to make itself look good. And my show is about the reality of America. It's comedy and it's drama. It's a monologue. It's a monologue, it? yes. I, I work on it with my partner, uh, Dr. Erez Gorin. He's a doctor of psychology and we, um, we try to tell a story. America ends up invading all of us in our minds, in our cultures, in our language. We're mm -hmm. speaking English right now. It sounds like a risky business, what you're doing at the moment. The same, um, it's similar to Sergio's story as well, because Sergio performing uh, in this show, The Trumps, 
at the uh, Aquitania uh, Teatre in Barcelona. That's so correct. tell us about this show. I think there is a very interesting debate here because I, I go the other way around. So there is an American here t telling one side of the, of, of the United States and there is a non-American here who really loves the United States. I admire the United States and I believe some of these, mm -hmm. those things as exactly. the United States is a great country mm -hmm. or or even so, well, my own experience is, uh, is I just got the permits to work over there in an extraordinary visa, they call it, for uh, uh, trying to attract talent from around the world. Those kind of things, that's something very positive. But it's interesting, the non-American guy talking very good about the United States and the American uh, yes. California one telling the other side, which is that's both. That's good. Yeah, both are very interesting. It mm -hmm. makes sense, though, because you're from this culture and people, I find people from Barcelona, Catalonia, mm -hmm. very intelligent and um, very fair and tolerant and very rational. So it makes sense that you would see stuff that you admire in the US and say, we should have it here. And we probably can. But at the same time, Spain in general, not speaking Catalonia, but Spain, ha is, is, has the eighth best healthcare system in the world. That's true. That's Americans true. That's true. are going to emergency rooms because they don't have doctors. So That's on true. a basic human level, standard of living, it's great. America attracts mm. great actors from Polonia. <laughs> you know, Thank you. To, and, and it helps you, you know, <laughs> from the live show your dreams. Polonia. But there's some basic things that America can learn from this culture, especially from Catalonia. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's, true. Mm -hmm. that's true. And uh, Rachel, it's interesting because you uh, live in Barcelona, you are, a, are an American performing in Spanish, and Sergi, right, we have Sergi, who is Catalan, but mm -hmm. when he goes to LA, uh, mm -hmm. he performs in uh, English. In, in English, with this, so, with this uh, accent, mm -hmm. I would say. But what is also funny is that when I'm in LA and when I audition in LA, Half of the times I'm called in a room to audition in Spanish, it's, if it's possible, with, the, with accent, not from Spain. Mexican. From Latin American, Mexican, <laughs> Colombian. And I moved to the States because I wanted to practice English and I wanted mm -hmm. to, you know, so it's, mm -hmm. it's just Can you fun. show us this accent? Can you um, Which give one? us an example? Which one? The, the Mexican, one you the want. Colombian or the Argentine? One of these that you prefer. Este, bueno, yo estuve haciendo una, durante un tiempo estuve haciendo una obra en, en, en argentino y, y estuve pues, trabajando el personaje en argentino, entonces, por ejemplo, este es uno de, en el que el, me siento bastante, bastante cómodo, porque está bien, ya viste, está bien eh, fácil y, eh, y es interesante. That's excellent. Pero, That's pero también estuve audicionando en colombiano y estuve haciendo pues, algunas audiciones para algunos shows en, en, en colombiano también. Y, well, that's brilliant. What about you, Rachel? Go on and on like that. No, so you're talking about this this challenge of um, acting in a language which is not your own. I never gave myself a choice. I came here because I wanted to immerse myself in the culture, um, form part of this society. I didn't want to live in this expat bubble, speaking English with my American or new British friends. I immediately started speaking. Spanish, which was horrible. Like I had to do <laughs> songs and wear costumes and distract people from the fact I couldn't really communicate. And then, like about after about a year, I was able to act in, in English in um, Spanish. And I, I've never done a show, a comedy show, in English here in my life. That's and I think brilliant. I'd be really uncomfortable doing it. My Spanish, some press article described it as. Um, Espanol Apache. It, well, oh, it's an insult. <laughs> it's like a you know very primitive sounding uh, Castellano. Mm -hmm. But don't you find as a humorist like your accent helps there you? There you go. There you go. Because people like you more. Exactly. It's Why? Cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get people's attention just because you have this yeah. accent or just because yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, I would like to ask you about the differences that you might find between Catalan humor and American oh, humor. Oh, interesting. So and I find the sense of humor in Catalan to be more. Uh, it's a reflection of the Catalan culture, which I think well, is cal like calmer. More, it's cal people are calm here. They're not insane like in the U.S. They don't it, shoot each other in the schools. Because we don't have the guns. Like the worst thing is that a bus driver will be cut off by a, 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 tr a car, and then they'll be like, "Tu, tu madre," you know, and like, <laughs> "Oh!" Like that's the most violent thing I can see all week. It's so mm -hmm. the humor reflects um, much more smooth um, gentleness. So an American comedian coming to, to Catalonia, it's brutal. It's like, it's like uh, 
violent and mm. and, and, and the, the it's it's hard for sometimes for people to take but mm. also there's people that like it and you agree Sergi? I would say about the American sense of humor that it's more diverse it's more diverse you can have a very high pitch comedy as if as it would be I don't know Saturday Night Live for example which I love or or even or even bigger than that some TV shows uh, mm. I don't know Jim Carrey in the 90s, something. Seinfeld. Exactly, Seinfeld. But you also can have uh, shows as The Office, for example, very subtle. Or other, Exactly, other kind of human. It's diverse. Here we are more stuck in our way to understand uh, how, how we understand things. So our, our humor more is more, maybe more British, huh. but it's just like that. And it's always been like that. So humor is a reflection of the culture. So there this culture is smaller. It's more. It's more homogenous. But and we are more US... afraid of changes, I would say. So we do the same kind of humor in Catalonia that we used to do. Some sort, of course, it has changed. But some sort of the same kind of humor that we used to do um, at the beginning of the nineties, for example, mm. and just like that. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, we'll continue to talk about humor with uh, Rachel and Sergi a bit later. Now we need to. Um, take a short uh, break and we leave you with a quote by one of the great English actors, Peter Ustinov, winner of two Oscars and author of several excellent novels and storybooks such as Life is an Operetta. Here it is. Here we are again. Today the main issue of our show is humour and that's why we invited two professional comedians, Rachel Ariev and Sergi Cervera. And as usual, we are also accompanied by our special collaborator, Tony Garcia. Hey, hello, how hey, are you? Tony. How are you guys? Good, I was you? laughing backstage. <laughs> well, we were waiting you? for you to have a good laugh, actually. Well, uh, before we uh, start, we go into business. Um, tell us what do you think about our previous conversation? What is your opinion about Catalan humor? Yeah, I was How listening to the conversation. It? I think it's very dry. That's the, <laughs> that's the word for Catalan humor. It's like if you think about Joan, Joan Capri, which is, you know, for me, one of the, the best iconic comedians in, in Catalonia, or Eugenio. Yeah, yeah. You know, they are really, really dry people. They almost seem depressed. You know, like, and explain yeah, the things like in a very dry. Hmm. You know, they don't laugh off their own jokes. It's, it's kind of a. And I think if you think of Mari Sampera, Jose Sata Tornil, even Kassen, they all have this, this, this kind of dry character that it thinks, you know, it, it, it becomes something universal for, for um, Catalan humor, that it's, a, it's dryness. You know, it's like. This is not funny. It because and that becomes you're funny. saying that this is not funny, you know. I'm about to explain something that it's not funny. That's and, genius. And, and that's genius. That makes then people laugh. Like, who wants to oh, watch yeah. a comedian who laughs yeah, at their yeah. own material? It's like, no, my my friends went to college, my sons, you know, we have money. That doesn't interest anyone. But Catalan is like, you know, prices in the restaurant are insane. It's like I remember this this monologue from Joan Capri. It's all about the restaurant that is very expensive. And at the end, he said to the, to the chef, hug me, hug me, because I'm not, I'm not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> very funny indeed. So, uh, Tony, what have you brought for us today? Oh, yes, I was, uh, I was doing a little research on, on, on humor, and I found, I found this, this very, uh, you know, funny documentary. In, uh, it's about, uh, it's called Lithology, and it's in 1962 in Tanzania. And it's the, the most incredible laughing epi epidemics ever registered. It's 30,000 people laughing at the same time. It starts in a school with a kid laughing, and then it's a teacher, the roommates, then it goes out, and, <laughs> and, and after, you know, like 24 hours, it's like 30,000 people laughing. And there's doctors from Europe that, that did some tests, you know, blood tests, to see if something were wrong, and nothing was wrong. They were laughing. And I. I <laughs> I think it's a funny story, and, and it's true. I mean, is it, is, it, are you sure it's, it's true? Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yes? Oh, okay. So it's not something you just made up no, for us no, today. No, no, no. I could. I could. <laughs> I think I, you made it up. I think I the could, same. but I didn't. I think the same, man. I, I, you it promise? Really, it really happened. Promise. Yes. 
I promise. Okay. No, can, no, you can, can you prove it? Can you, can you, can you just it. prove it? Well, I can prove it. Well, I can send you the, the documentary later on and you, can, you, and you can check it out, but you're not going to be here next well, week. Well, I so. think I'm going home later and check it yes, out please. because I'm not sure what Tony just uh, said to us. But anyway, <laughs> let's believe him. Did you have a presence or had something you know, similar, like a, a laughing fit or something in your life? I, re I remember one. Something contagious. Yeah, well, it goes in the other way around, but I remember once one person that told me that she didn't remember last time that she laughed out loud uncontrolled. And I thought, like, that's terrible. That's terrible. That's, yeah. terrible. that's terrible. I mean, yeah, that impressed me. Like, like yeah. And you so made you her don't laugh, laugh in the end. You, you didn't make her laugh. I, I, I just laughed off her. <laughs> <laughs> I just, <laughs> okay. No? No, what? Contagious, That's something. Yeah, I've laughed, I've laughed uncontrollably lots of times. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, on my way here, actually. And then I ended up walking half the way <laughs> yeah, you because might I got thrown <laughs> off the bus. But, you know, when you laugh uncontrollably, you know, it's, it's painful, it hurts. You start to cry. Exactly. And, uh, the it's, stomach, it's terrible. It's, it, that's the best kind but of laughter. You almost it's suffer very with healthy, it. no? To, to laugh like that. At least this is what Tony, I yes, think, is yes, going yes, to be. It's very to healthy. Us. It's yeah. healthy. I have some data here. It's true. I know Good. now I'm you, you don't trust that. me, I'm glad guys. I'm to know that too. Yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, laughing can improve circulation and the cardiovascular system. That's true. Here we go, here we go okay. again. Everything that can do that. That makes sense. It helps you. It helps you lose weight as well. Interesting. It burns a little more than, than a calorie a minute, and you get the same benefits from laughing 100 times a day as from rowing for 10 minutes. Yeah. How many times a day? Sorry. 100 times a day. Okay. I can do it. Just now. Just, I can do it, not now, now, not 100 oh, yeah. in a row, but, just, <laughs> but I can do it 100 times a day, it's doable. Uh -huh. okay. no? no? No, yeah, absolutely, yeah, no, no, I'm not questioning, I'm just looking at you to see... What I could do it, that, that is healthy, it's healthy. Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, look at them, great. how healthy they look, no? <laughs> thank you. I was yes, thinking, you look very healthy. You. Thank you. You're, while, you're, while you're saying, I was thinking about what a great job it is to be a stand-up comic, because your job is to think of funny things, but also to watch other comedians perform, and you're always laughing, but then the drinking and the drugs offsets But the, it's healthier, uh, it's benefits. healthier to laugh or provoke the laughing? Uh, I would say to, to laugh. Yeah, of course. If you of provoke course. it, there's something wrong with you, usually. <laughs> it's mentally but you can ill. Get you can be well you, paid. But you can, I mean, yeah. you can get paid you can make for making people it, laugh. Exactly. Also, also and good. money solves everything, as we know. It's free, what it's free interesting. Yeah. Let's see. So, this is also true. It's like there are 18 different types of laughter. 18, 18 different 18. types. 18. We're not Which going ones? to address them all. But I do propose an exercise to get to know better some of you lovers. Let's see. All right. How is your kind laughter? The, the kind, kind one. My, my kind. relatives say that I have a very fake laugh. Okay, that's so true. Wow. There's nothing like. <laughs> Which is it true? It's, it's a real one, but they so say that sounds fake. That I don't be, know why. That does. would be the kind one? The kind? The that's kind one. one. And I have a friend that have another one very contagious that it's like. <laughs> <laughs> and he does like that and it's really contagious. And then you start doing the same, the same kind of love because it's <laughs> even funnier. So the love is, <laughs> is better. What about you? What, what would be with, with the, the kind one? <laughs> What do you mean the kind one? The kind one, the one you, you know, you're, you're in a table and you don't really don't want to, you know, laugh or something. Like but, polite. But oh, you like have a polite to, laugh? The polite oh, one. The polite oh, I get one, it. You oh. could say. Oh. Um, hee hee. <laughs> <laughs> that's extremely polite. That's really. It's, mm. That's so polite that it just, that just offended me. It's now. so, I know, it's natural. It's too polite for me. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's go for the sar sarcastic one. Uh, with the sarcastic one. <laughs> That's all you're gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well and done. The, and the Frank one, like the. I think I just started with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. that. Makes me laugh. I just did it. I just did mine laughing. Exactly. Okay, and yeah. the repressed yeah, one. The depressed. The repressed. Oh, repressed. repressed. Oh, repressed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my, silent, all my laughs are similar. Maybe you don't have 18 They're types. Pathological. Maybe like five. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, Just I have. Asking. I have a laugh deficiency. <laughs> we should call a doctor. That yeah. was an honest laugh. <laughs> With all that studies, I always ask myself, 
Who is doing that study? Yeah, exactly. It Someone should, who yeah. doesn't laugh a lot. Yeah. Probably. Probably. Let's, yeah. let's investigate this. Exactly. People is laughing in very different ways. <laughs> we have to find out. We need to know yeah, why we need to know and how. Yeah. The I world. think uh, mm. they're Scandinavians. Because <laughs> they have so many resources and they're so sophisticated and they get into like the smallest little hair splitting questions and... And they're, they're bored. Yeah, it's only at home because it's cold outside. Exactly. Right. And, but we benefit. TV is boring. Man, All service is paid. Benefits. I mean, the life way. quality is huge. There is nothing to struggle with. Then let's investigate people's yes. laughter. Yes. Anyway, um, laughter uh, nowadays, or in some <coughs> cases, can become a risky business, as oh, you right all here. know. And wh what do you think that laughing and comedy in general can be considered so dangerous by, especially by authoritarian regimes? Because we question things. Laughing and humor question things. It's, it's a way to question everything. And there are certain people who take themselves extremely serious uh, and danger, uh, danger instead of authoritarianism, it mm -hmm. always comes with a lack of humor. Yes. And it always worked like that. I mean, the clowns with the kings 500 years ago, they were the only ones to face the king and tell the truth. Exactly. That's another thing that tell goes with truth. humor. It's the only, it, it, well, not the only way, but it's a truthful but it's, way it's, to tell the truth. But it's true, if you, make, if you make jokes out of something, it's because you don't feel that. But it's the first step. That's a good way. It's a, it's a way to confront fear. It's, it's the That's first true. way you confront from fear. That's if you, if That's you're true. capable of laughing at something, you know, you, you don't fear it anymore. You know, you're sort fighting of. You're fear. irreverent. Exactly. That's exactly. Satire irreverent. is, you know. And by the way, the uh, do you guys um, go a lot to uh, stand up comedies in English in Barcelona? There are not that many no. here. No? <laughs> but I've just met someone here no. that is going to invite me to. I no, don't know, nothing. But you perform in Spanish, damn it. No, yeah. I just, I don't get out much. Mm -hmm. no. I, well, you do, I just do it, no? You do it yourself, no? So, uh, I walk through the forest and look at Habilis. I don't want to be around entertainment. You look at, sorry, I'm very what? At old. You look no. at Habilis? You look young. What's that? What? What's that? I can't hear, what? <laughs> <laughs> that was very funny. No, I just didn't understand the word. You say you are looking at? Habilis. Habilis. Oh, Habilis. you mean wild uh, boars? Yes, uh, you know, okay. I just... That's what I didn't understand. understand. That was the, the part I didn't understand. There's this cult of people in Barcelona who have on their cars bumper stickers of not only the burro catala, <laughs> but then like Habilis. I want to be with those people. Well, I just asked you that because our today's portrait, which is a section of the program, is starred by Donica Tiernan, an Irish comedian who's made a name for himself on the stand-up comedy scene in Barcelona. Let's find out more about him. My name is Donica Tiernan. I am a, a jack of all trades, but a master of none. I'm an English literature graduate, a former restaurant manager, current teacher and school manager. I perform stand-up comedy, I write freelance journalism and I occasionally act in advertisements. First and foremost, I'm a movie fan, but they don't let you do that professionally, so uh, you've got to do something. I came here about three years ago. Um, I came here Tuesday anyway, I, I was finished up, I was working in bars and restaurants since I finished university in Ireland and I uh, just decided on a big old change and also followed a lady over here as so many people do and we're still together which is a statistical improbability as it happens. I've been doing stand-up comedy for uh, an embarrassingly long time to say that I'm not a full-time professional, but it's okay. Uh, I started out in Ireland where I ran comedy clubs for quite a while, uh, got out of that and came over here and I was surprised you could still very much perform a lot over here. There's a huge expat population and a lot of tourists flowing through the city all the time, so there's always a market for English-speaking comedy. I mean, I say a market, I mean, it's doing okay, but I do a lot of that too. Did some promotion of the comedy over here too. Because the thing is, with particularly in Barcelona, a lot of the time you won't be getting comedy fans. 
per se. You know, um, so with people who aren't necessarily, like you'll just be getting people who'll be like, ah, oh, there's a comedy show on, let's go in. Whereas you, like, you, there's not a concentration of comedy fans. So in that case, you can pretty much just joke about like sex or the difference between people from different countries. That works with everybody. I mean, with your more dedicated comedy fans, that would seem like a little bit hacky and they're looking for more of an angle and better writing. But like, yeah, with with those two subjects, or actually even just cursing. If the room is a certain way, if you just curse right, you'll get them on your side. But I prefer the writing element, I'm much more into that. I normally have a, a lot of scraps of paper on me, I'll write something down. Nine times out of ten, I look at the scrap of paper later in the day and I go, what the hell does that mean? But then there'll be one thing that and I can build something off of that, you know? With laughter, if you can really force somebody to do something that's completely effortless and almost against their will, that's, that's great, and especially if it sounds natural. If you're filling up a room with strangers every night, it's so much better than if your friends or family are there. Sorry, friends or family, but uh, you, like, just their laughs count more. You'll get a lot of uh, good grace from your friends and family, but if you can fill up a room with total strangers and like, actually make them laugh, that's just, that's just brilliant. And uh, we're talking about humor, about uh, stand-up uh, comedy. Rachel, in your case, well, some critics have considered your humor as being quite irreverent. Have you ever felt that some people maybe have been offended by your style? Um, yes, I not only felt it, but saw it and heard about it later. And you can read about it online in various uh, sites forever, okay. unless I hire lawyers. But that's the nature of humor. It, humor is uh, very specific. It's culturally specific. It's personally specific. Uh, there's stuff that I did years ago that I can't stand watching now. That's true of probably any comedian or artist. So or everyone person. has, yes, yes, and and so everybody has. Um, you can't expect humor to hit everybody the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's not just like political disagreements. It's uh, personality differences. So, you know, to say, oh, they didn't like my joke, they're wrong, they're uptight, Th that's stupid. It's, you know, they didn't like it, they might not like you, they might have a bad day. Sorry to interrupt, they probably are uptight and stupid and the joke was okay. <laughs> Thank you for interrupting because I was getting long-winded on that answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, Do you think humor should have limits? Well, this is a topic we're going to discuss a little bit later in our face-off section. I don't know if I can answer that question. I mean, I have a long answer, but, um, you know, a short I, answer, I might be thrown please. in jail for answering it, so. Uh, jails are crowded right, yeah. right now, nowadays, here. No, honestly, like... We'll be fine. Uh, here there are laws. In this country... That was a joke. Sorry, yeah, but... That was, that was a good one. In my own world. Exactly, sorry, sorry. I, I, I'm I, sorry, I, I, I missed just it. Just listen, not I... interrupt people. And... Exactly, because she's telling jokes. You're telling jokes at the same time, so it's a bit difficult he to follow. He lives in L.A. Above. This is how he acts now. He's a U.S. person. People, yeah. He's rude. He uh, doesn't Catalan. work with others. That's me. That's All me. of your Catalan cooperativeness is. Psh. It's gone. Yeah. Um, I forgot the question. Sorry. No, but <laughs> you, you sort of you you answered the the, the question because uh, you said you uh, you had a long answer. Finally, you gave us a short answer and about the limits of um, of humor. There are limits, but there are, I mean nobody can decide what the limit is. It's it's up to every person, and every person will find out where, when they crossed it, if you're an artist. And um, there are laws against certain kinds of speech in this country. So that's a limit, it's real. And if you want to pay the consequences or expose yourself to them, you'll cross that limit. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with some of these laws, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I, 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 do, I do come from the country that, you know, it has the most liberal free speech in, on paper laws in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about you, Sergi? You, um, you are in Polonia, no? So mm. have you ever uh, felt that you offended uh, somebody with your humor? Well, I agree with, with, with her. I mean, Polonia, Polonia is interesting because Polonia is a consolidated show now, so which, which is a big thing that the, TV show, that the TV show has achieved. But it wasn't like that at the beginning. At the beginning, uh, used to be people offended that try to try to go against the show. Nowadays, uh, mostly of the people doesn't feel brave enough to go against a show that has between half million and one million audience each episode. 
but that's because it's been consolidated. But still so, there are people offended, people who's just happy with the fact that you are making fun of them. And, and Polonia has a, a, um, a, very, a very specific um, line. They, they, I mean, they make fun of some things, they don't make fun of other things, they have respect for everyone and they try to hit every, everyone. But that's just one kind of humor, there are so, of course. so others. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, and that's my opinion, and I could go to jail for that, but the problem here with those laws is not the fact that they exist, which I not agree, uh, agree with, but they are not the problem. The problem is that they, they use those laws against one kind of people and never against the other kind of people for the same things. And that's when uh, uh, something becomes dangerous for me because you are using the strongest version of, uh, of uh, a repression uh, against one kind of humor and you are doing nothing against the other side with the same laws. That's something objective, that's a fact, that's not an opinion. And well, that's, that's the problem. Of course there are limits, but that the problem is, is when they try to band it. Just but, band it. That was uh, very well explained. And before we go to the uh, following um, um, uh, part of uh, our interview, let's, uh, let me ask you, um, tell us a joke that makes you laugh. <laughs> tell us uh, something that really makes you laugh, something that you consider very funny. A joke, a funny joke. Oh, that's terrible. I've the never been The funniest joke to for you. The funniest joke ever. The funniest joke ever that I've ever heard was some comedian said, um, of course I didn't write it, uh, some other comedian said, uh, I held the door for a woman today, she got mad, it was a revolving door. Okay. I'm not good at telling jokes, that's all, I, I'm once. I'm not either. So. No, no, I remember once going in on, on stage, that was, uh, I was uh, maybe 18 or 19, I, all the joke in front of an audience and it happened to me the worst thing ever which is instead of a quick joke a long joke long jokes are dangerous because they Very create dangerous. big yeah. expectations yes. and right at the end when you are just about to finish and to say the last line then you goes with that like oh no 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 it wasn't like that I'm gonna correct myself at the beginning when I said so it it wasn't that it was the other way around terrible. that was terrible and it was nice. last time that I decided to <coughs> tell a joke publicly, <laughs> which is not being supervised for the screen writers and screen, uh, script doctors. That was funny. Yes, mm -hmm. my jokes are dirty, so I can. <laughs> Just go for it. Why not? Yeah. I love dirty no. jokes. This is Catalonia. No. Yeah, We're free. Yeah, we have the Caganea. They are about Michael Jackson, so no, I'm not, go I'm not going there. Uh, Tony, we have some questions for these guys, no? Yes. Um, let's talk about references. Which comedian would, would you like to be like? If there's any, you know, someone out there that you really, that you really like, or admire, or you think this guy or this girl is brilliant, I oh, I would love to be. There's so many good comedians. Mm -hmm. There's mm, so many good. Few. I mean, I've always loved Sarah Silverman. Um, and I've always loved uh, Louis C.K. I don't really want to be him. Uh, anymore <laughs> or really near him but um, you know he's got a very specific material I could I could never do Louis CK's material I just I loved his style and his mm -hmm. I always since I was a kid I always admired Jim Carrey and when I grew up I just started not telling that he was a, a reference for me or someone I admire but then uh, now I just forgot about that and I'm just um, I'm just admiring him again and just admitting <laughs> publicly. Pu publicly. publicly. I'm publicly, I'm, I'm accepting that I'm, I'm a big fan of Jim Carrey. Mm -hmm. um, well, guys, we need to conclude here. It's been good fun, great fun. It's been fun. funny. Thank you for it's having It's been us. very funny, hilariously funny. Thank you both for coming. Good luck with your projects. And thank you, Tony. Thank you. I'm going to laugh 18 time. different ways. Mm -hmm. You need to laugh like 100 <laughs> we times we a day, yes. like you said. 100 times a day, 18 different ways. Okay, good luck with that. Thank you. <laughs> You'll tell me next week yes. how, it, uh, how it went. Will do. Mm -hmm. And we have laughed uh, and we are relaxed now and in perfect conditions to assimilate some language tips. Listen carefully to our teacher Rosie Griffin because she is going to propose you some EGMs related to humour. Take note. As we're talking about humour today, here's some phrases that you might find useful. 
The first thing you should know is that humour broadens the mind. It opens your mind to different subjects and ideas, and it may help you understand them better too. But for humour to work, you need to find the right moment. You want to have perfect timing. It means that you've told the joke just at the right time. Or maybe you told a joke just in the nick of time. You just about made the right moment. What if you don't tell a joke at the right time? It's likely that it will fall flat. That means it was unsuccessful and nobody laughed at your joke. There could be other reasons people aren't laughing at your jokes, though. Maybe they're offensive or it's a tasteless joke. You're making people feel bad or insulted. Or maybe the subject matter is inappropriate. It's no laughing matter. Maybe you're making fun of someone. You're laughing at them. You're making them the butt of the joke. That's making them the object of the joke. Some people don't mind, but a lot of people find it annoying. So be careful and think twice before you tease someone. Some people are carefree and in good humour all of the time. We say that they are happy-go-lucky. Some people are always cracking jokes, creating a great atmosphere. We say that they're a barrel of laughs. But be careful, there's often a thin line between being a barrel of laughs and a laughing stock. That's behaving ridiculously and people are laughing at you, not with you. But you know what they say, if you're the only one laughing at your jokes in the pub, find a new pub. Bye. Should there be legal limits to humour? Patricia Scalona and Matthew Tree are preparing to discuss this matter in a few moments. the 24th, the emotion of the human towers is coming back. This date, St. John's Day, has already become the starting gun for the season of human towers, which this year seems to be thrilling. This meeting will take place in Valls with the performance of the two local groups, Colla Vella and Colla Jovas Chiquets de Valls. La Charcha will broadcast this meeting and nearly 30 more. On the same day, the 24th, La Xarxa will begin to broadcast the programme about Castells, Dosus Amun, that you will be able to follow every Sunday night at 10.30. And the highlight of the season will come in October with the Tarragona Human Tower Competition. We've interviewed a member of the Colla Vella and another of the Castellers de Villafranca to find out what to expect this season. Check it out. The first person in my family to, to be a Castellet was the great-grandfather of my great-grandmother. So it's a, it's a long history in my, in my family. We love human towers and it's part of our life. Since I was a kid, I came here to La Plaza de la Vila to see the Castellers. And it was my passion and my, my dad didn't let me uh, do the Castells uh, when I was a kid because they thought it was dangerous. So when I was like 17 years old, I, I went to the Colla and started to be a Castellet de Villafranca. The first performances took place here in, in Valls and in this square, in the Plaza of Lat. And this is the, the birthplace of human towers. For Castellers of, from Valls, like myself, it's, it's almost like a temple, like a, a sacred place. When we perform here, it's different than performing anywhere else because there's, there's also this connection with the past and this connection with history. At the beginning of the century, the most important colla was La Colla Vella Tickets de Valls from Valls, and we didn't have a colla here. So, Valls came here to make the biggest towers in the, in the world of Castells and the village of Villafranca made the base. You know that you're part of something that it's, that it's bigger than you and that it's, it's building beautiful things. In a group of people of all ages um, and working all together where every, everyone is really important to make something really, really big. Uh, like it's a, a tower. I think it's the best start we've ever had in, in our history and we have more than 200 years 
So I'm very optimistic and you have to take into account that this year at the end of the season we have the Tarragona contest and the Concurs de Castells, which is very important. We haven't won it since the year 2000. So we're, we're rehearsing very hard in order to, to be able to, to win it again. It's a really special season for us because we've been uh, winning the Concurs of Tarragona since uh, 2002. So it's gonna be it's gonna be almost 20 years winning the concourse, and it's a, for me it's it's a really special motivating season, but it's also a really long season, and we have to make really good castells in a lot of plazas. So it's gonna be I think a long season this year. Since 2010, we we've, we've been doing all the collas, the 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 biggest number of gamas extra each year you know, and improving this number. And I think that probably this year is going to be the one uh, that you're going to see, see more uh, gamas extra, more places that L. I think it's going to be a fantastic season for everybody. Because all, you see, when you see all the groups, they're doing very well. They're improving their numbers from previous seasons. So I think it's, I think it's going to be probably the best season in history. Waffles are usually associated with a type of food that is fattening and not entirely healthy. However, today we are going to surprise you with another way to make waffles. The proposal comes to us from the center of Catalonia from Sulsona and it consists of a spinach waffle with mackerel tartar, yogurt, vinaigrette and fresh herbs. I know it sounds difficult, but it is not. Here you have the recipe. This recipe is the work of the chef of the restaurant Mara de la Fon in Sulsona and today we are glad to have him with us. Hello Roger and welcome to the Weekly Mag. Hi. Mm. Really interesting recipe, how are you going to prepare it? Um, today we're going to make um, spinach waffles. To do those waffles, to make the, the waffle mass, uh, we need some eggs, flour. We're going to use some avocados uh, and obviously spinach, milk and grated cheese. And then... Par parmigiano cheese, Yeah, no? actually it's parmigiano cheese, yeah. We're going to make a mackerel tata. We're going to use mackerels, we're going to use some pickles, olives. And we're going to finish everything with a touch of uh, yogurt vinaigrette, olive oil, uh, some yogurt, obviously. And we're going to finish with a small salad of rocket and cherry tomatoes. Mm, sounds delicious. So let's start. First, we need a jar. Uh, if you want to help me, uh, yes, we're going to put course. in that jar the milk. Yes, sure. Uh, all of it? Yeah, all of it. It's already uh, with the cheese. Okay. I'm going with the eggs. Okay. We're gonna be. It's really easy. What kind of eggs are these? <laughs> they are uh, from my house. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, chickens, and it's like our pets. If you want to you. add some uh, flour. All of it. Yeah, all of it. Okay. Well, um, so who yes. started the restaurant? Mm. My pa my parents. My my fathers. Mm -hmm. Your parents. My parents. How yeah. long ago? 24 years ago, well, we, we're going to add some baking soda to this um, because we're going to make a kind of batter no, for the waffles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, waffles is not a very Catalan dish, is it? Huh. Uh, the, the most famous waffles are from Belgium, and um, well, that's uh, waffles usually are very sweet and very fatty and very strong. And uh, we're but just today we're going to make yeah. savory waffles. Yeah, savory waffles and uh, softer waffles. As a as a starter, as a starter, uh, summer starter. Very good idea. Let's put some olive oil also. Waffles are made of uh, butter, and in that case, we use olive oil, which is much more healthier. What we were saying at the beginning that this is a healthy uh, recipe. Yeah. And um, the fact that it is green, obviously, the, the green color that we'll see at the end comes from the spinach. We've just put the avocado in the yeah. um, in this batter. 
No, and then what next? What next? And you wanna take Hold it this? for me? Hold yes. this, yeah. Um, okay. Now we blend it. Yeah. Excellent. And um, I suppose now it's ready. We're gonna Just put it on the mold, pouring carefully. Mm -hmm. It looks great. Yeah, it is. <laughs> How long do we need to cook this for? Yeah, we're gonna cook, uh, we're gonna bake it for 10 minutes round at 180 degrees. Okay. We've got those mackerels, cheap uh, blue fish, uh, very high uh, quality fish. The only thing that you have to, to take care of is there is a lot of bones in the, in the mackerel. So in, in the middle, if you cut a little bit like that and a little bit like that, you're gonna get off almost every one of the, the bones. If we can get off these bones, the fillet, it's completely clean. Uh, to see if it's completely clean, if there's no bones, you just uh, pass the hand. And oh. you, you, if you pass the hand, you can, you can, you can feel the bones. That's the good so uh, if you don't good feel, tip. So if you don't feel the bones, there's no bone. Hmm, good tip. We continue with the recipe. Now we yeah. need to chop this uh, fish, yeah. the mackerel, finely chopped or roughly chopped? That's uh, as, as you like it. I, I, I prefer let the pieces a little bit bigger than traditional maybe uh, tata because I, I like to find the, mm -hmm. the mackerel. To feel it, yeah, yes. To feel it. Okay, and what's the next step? Next step, we, we need to boil. We're gonna put the mackerel inside. Um, we're gonna chop some pickles, so we've some got, olives. Yeah, pickled onions and olives, yeah. and uh, then we've got cucumbers as well. The, on a tata you can, you can put whatever you like. I mean, uh, if you like some uh, anchovies, you can put some anchovies. If you like uh, another kind of olives or black olives or uh, fresh herbs, they are awesome in the recipe. Mm -hmm. Do you put any vinegar? Uh, in, that, put, in that case, I'm going to put, put some uh, yeah, lime. Some lime. Some so, is, so lime is indispensable, I guess, because it helps you to uh, to to have that uh, you know the taste of yeah. the, like the like tart the taste. Yeah. Uh, taste. I think on a tata, the, the point is that um, you have to balance. You've got the you've got the meat that is raw. You have to balance with some. Uh, sour with some grease, uh, in that case we're going to use olive oil, but you can also use butter or uh, any other oils that you have at home. Mm -hmm. um, you can use uh, lime juice, but you can also use some vinegar, uh, rice vinegar or regular vinegar. And then a little bit of olive oil. Of course. Some dried some dried the dill. Dill, of course. I, I love dill with uh, greasy fishes like uh, mackerel or sardines or uh, salmon or uh, even tuna fish is awesome with, with a touch of dill. I love dill. It's really good. And the lime. We're going to put also... Can you pass me the, the grater? Yes, of course. Just, just a touch. You know lime is strong. Some lime zest. Yeah, some lime zest. I'm just as strong, but it goes with uh, with, the, um, with the spinach, with the touch green, with the pickles. It works very well. I agree. It's very aromatic. I sometimes used to put a little touch of um, sugar to contrast the the sour of the lime or the sour of the vinegar, but just just a touch. You can you cannot find the the, the sugar on the recipe on the mouth. I mean. Can we uh, add mustard to a uh, yeah, tartar? Of course. Hmm? Yeah, you can add mustard, uh, any kind of spices that you like. Uh, obviously, pepper. We mix a little bit, and we let it. You can let it uh, a couple of hours in the in the fridge to 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 let the, the savors, the flavors uh, melting and, 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 and the fish, it cooks a little bit with the, with the lime juice. And, 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 that's, and that's nice. So we're gonna make a, a yogurt vinaigrette. Um, we're gonna use yogurt as a base. We, we, 
the, the sour part, it's another time the lime because we're, we start with the lime, so I think it's, it's cool to finish with the lime. And olive oil, obviously. So we okay. put some lime. So if you want to help me. Yes, just, sure. Uh, what do I need to do? Keep the, the mixer down. Okay. Oh, take it, take it. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. How much oil? Well, Enough. more or less. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. You never get uh, a lot of uh, olive oil if it's a good olive oil. Thank you. Close. We're gonna add some salt. Okay. And I like some pepper on it also. Freshly ground pepper. Yeah. Pepper. And, and some course, dill. Of course, the dill. Yeah, we, we're still on that idea. The, the lime, the dill, the fish, the yogurt. That's that's very Mediterranean. Mm. It smells really delicious. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, start yes. doing the dish. Okay, uh, so the, we have the uh, tartar here, we have the vinaigrette yeah. and the waffles. The waffle, the yes, green the waffle, waffle. just one. Yeah, we're gonna add some... The waffle which is uh, very green. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we keep on green with that rockets. A bit of color. Yeah, a bit of red. And also fresher, freshness. Mm -hmm. ta -ta -ta, that already did. This is a very um, summery dish, no? It's perfect for the summer. For example? Very light, very healthy. The vinaigrette is up to you. If you like it, <laughs> put it more. Yes. Some tomatoes. Well, Roger, it uh, looks amazing, and I'm sure it is equally delicious. Thank you so much for cooking this amazing spinach. Um, waffle with the mackerel tartar for us, for the weekly mag. Uh, good luck with the restaurant. Thank you. I hope to see you soon. <laughs> see you. Hi. The first thing you should know when talking about verbs related to humor is that you do not say a joke, you tell jokes. It's important to know the difference. Now let's look at some more phrasal verbs. The first one defines or gives name to a genre or type of comedy, stand-up. Stand-up comedy is the type of comedy in which an actor or performer stands on his feet in front of an audience telling jokes or monologues that make reference or allude to the comedian's life. He's telling these jokes, trying to make the audience crack up or burst out in laughter. If he's been successful, they won't be able to control themselves and will constantly laugh at the comedian's jokes. To laugh off is something different. It means to minimize or brush something off, like what happened to me last week. I was riding my bicycle on a very busy street and I slipped and fell in front of a lot of people. It could have been embarrassing, but instead of being down, I chose to laugh it off and pretend like nothing happened. You can always spot a good comedian by the way he reels off a text or a monologue with very few pauses and it's fluid. Like my friend Gloria last week, she couldn't stop reeling off an endless stream of jokes about Donald Trump. We couldn't stop laughing, but towards the end, it was getting a little boring. She was running on and on about the same thing. It's important to keep your message short and to the point. So keeping that in mind, I will avoid running on any longer and leave it here. Goodbye. Throughout the show, we have already pointed out some aspects of the subject that we will be discussing right now. 
In today's face-off, our regular contenders will be presenting their arguments on the limits of humour. So we have Patricia, Patricia Scalona and Matthew Tree again with us today. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome to both of you. And um, first of all, I would like to ask you, Patricia, are you a funny person? Do you tell a lot of jokes? What kind of humour do you like? I'm terrible at jokes. <laughs> I, <laughs> I've at got a good jokes. sense of humour, I would like to think, but I'm terrible at telling jokes. I get lost, I get confused and I never tell them well, so I prefer to listen to them. Uh, what I do is I tease and I pick on people very easily, so that's my thing. That's <laughs> yeah, I've noticed yeah, that. Yeah, you've noticed, right? Over the weeks, so I've <laughs> We kind I've of agree, up on that. right? Yeah. You haven't seen half of it yet. You'll see. <laughs> I see. And what about you, what Matthew? Your sense of humor, you're British, you're English, so your sense of humor must be really wild, no? Well, we're not all born, you know, with a, with a sense of humor, but yeah, there is a certain thing. Like, I like. Uh, I was brought up on Monty Python, for example, um, and I, what I really like is the humour of embarrassment, which is when uh, people are put in really embarrassing situations which they themselves have created. Mm -hmm. uh, for example? For example, there's a programme, a series that Ricky Gervais did uh, oh. called... I love Ricky Gervais. Uh, he, his, he was, he's great. This was his second series after The Office, and it was about um, people who, who want to be actors but they're just there as extras. And um, a black actor comes on the film set and one of the women extras really falls for this black guy, right? And invites him round to her house and everything seems to be going well. But in her house, she's got a collection of dolls. And one of the dolls is a gollywog. That is those racist dolls that they used to have until the 1950s. So she immediately takes the doll, hides it behind her back. And the man's going, I'm sorry, what? What are you hiding behind your back? Nothing, nothing, nothing. And then eventually she takes out the gollywog, picks up a, a, a lady doll from the shelf. It's perfectly okay for them to be together. <laughs> 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 and it's like, so she makes the, that, that's humor of embarrassment. I see, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's uh, hilarious. Yeah. Brilliant, I love it. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of humor. Of I'm course. Witty of and course you do. And of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. Why would we agree? Agree, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is yeah. the, this That's is not the point. point. Yeah, That's exactly. not the point. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, it's real. It's honest that we don't agree in this. And hmm. um, yeah, I prefer a different kind of humor altogether. Yeah, so um, let's get back to our question today uh, about the limits of humor. What do you think, uh, Patricia? I'm going to be very short answering that yes. and then I'm going to let him expand on it. Okay, okay. That's, no. We like that. No. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's it. Full stop. Full stop. Period. You yeah. Okay. <laughs> you make the argument. Well, I don't know. <laughs> okay. But you need to develop a little bit. I will, I will, yeah. but I, I want to hear what he has to say. Yeah, okay. and then she's going to smack me down. <laughs> um, so if you agree. In, in a word, yes. <laughs> yes. Of course. And I, I would say the limit is when the part of the joke which is funny is less important than the part of the joke which is nasty or racist or inciting to hatred. For example, there's an Afro-French comedian, it's a famous case, Je uh, Donne Mabala Mabala, and he started off as a stand-up comic um, making slightly risque jokes. And then, as his career went on, he just started making anti-Semitic rants in, on the stage. I mean, he just became a like an anti-Semitic preacher almost, and so the jokes weren't, weren't so funny. Um, and if I may very quickly give an idea of the difference between the, between the two, with, yes, with two very quick Catalan jokes. For example, a uh, typical Catalan joke made by go. Catalans, <laughs> told to me by Catalans. <laughs> um, a Catalan and his son are uh, driving along and they see a, an offer for um, a ride in an old-fashioned aeroplane, you know, with the open cockpits and everything. And the son says, Papa, Papa, please, let's go on that aeroplane. And the Papa goes up to the pilot, asks the price. The, the man says to his son, it's too expensive, it's too expensive. And the pilot says, typical bloody Catalan, doesn't want to spend any money. OK, I'll make you an offer. If we go up in the plane and you don't make any noise, not a single sound, 
you get a free flight. So the Catalan says, oh, fantastic. So he gets into the plane with his son, two open cockpits, and the pilot says, no, I'm going to show this bloody Catalan. And he takes the plane up and he loops the loop, no sound from the Catalan. He goes round and round, he flies close to buildings, loops the loop again, no sound. And he lands and he says, okay, you've got your free, free flight. But wasn't there a moment when you wanted to shout or scream and the Catalan says, well, when my son fell out of the plane. <laughs> but so that's a sort of okay Catalan joke, but a nasty Catalan joke mm. is one is very short and it's one that was told to an English friend of mine in Madrid. What's the difference between a Catalan and a bowl of shit? The bowl. <laughs> Which is just sort of hatred really. It's not really. Well, well you must agree he's uh, Matthew is very good at telling jokes. Um, he's okay. <laughs> It's fine. Okay, yeah. Well, I'm coming from I need Patricia, a, uh, no? you should be pleased. A few more drinks to find you really, really funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, what, I, what I'm saying is that no, there are no limits to humor. Unless, no, there shouldn't be any legal limits to humor. I mean, the limits to humor are the ones that you set on yourself. There are moral limits that you are, might not be willing to cross. You know, it's, um, I don't know. If you're Jewish, you might not want or uh, need anybody to hear about the Holocaust, about Holocaust jokes. Or if you have, um, if you're handicapped in any way, maybe you don't want to hear about that. But, or if, but it's been found that, for example, people with cancer um, find their own sense of humor, joking about cancer, joking about something that's deadly and might kill them. So my I mean, it's point, like a therapy, no? Exactly, it's like a therapy. Humor is a therapy. So. The limits of sense of humor are completely linked to the limits of uh, freedom of expression. I mean, if you cannot express yourself freely, if you can, freedom of speech, sorry, if you cannot um, have that, you cannot have humor. And it's the same thing for me. So you might not like it when people make, and I don't like that, when people um, are racist in their jokes, that at all, I don't like that at all. But I have to acknowledge the fact that they should be able to make those jokes, bad as they are. Mm -hmm. Well, we're talking today to two professional comedians um, uh, about this, about the limits of uh, humor. It can become uh, very risky and dangerous nowadays to, uh, to tell jokes. About the King um, of Spain, for example. Yeah, I mean, look at Tony Alba's case, for example. <laughs> That's outrageous, I think. That shouldn't happen. There should be the, the only limits to humor should be your own limits to humor, not legal ones. I mean, everybody should be able to, to tell whatever joke they want and face the backlash that they, they might bring with them, you know? People might argue with you. People might tell you, you are a fucking moron. Like, literally, they could tell you that because if you're telling a racist joke, that's what you are Really, <laughs> so maybe, yeah. but um, but that's it, you know. That that, that mm -hmm. should be the only limit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd Matthew, agree. That's hard to beat. Yeah, that's no, hard to disagree because with. Because I almost, yeah, I I, <laughs> I would agree with with most of that. I think in England there's a there's a phrase where they say, everybody has the right to be offended. So you know, by if you offend people when you tell a joke, and in fact you're always going to offend somebody if you tell most jokes. Uh, that person has a right to be offended. And they can, like you said, they can react and uh, back. I would say the, the only time when there's a kind of uh, something needs to be done uh, legally is when, in fact, somebody like Jadone Mabala Mabala, he's not actually telling jokes. He's, uh, he's making hate speech and disguising it very thinly as humor. Uh, and I would say that's, that's more or less the, the limit. But, I mean, I th you can get very risque. There's a, there's a classic moment when three days after 9-11, uh, I mean, imagine that, in America, three days after 9-11, in front of an American audience, a Muslim comedian, a woman, goes on stage, and I mean, people, everybody's talking about 9-11, 3, over 3,000 people killed, all the rest of it. And she's wearing sort of Muslim dress, traditional Muslim dress. And she says, um, hi everybody, my name is Sharia Musa." And she pauses and then she says, or at least that's what it says on my pilot's license. <laughs> and there was a silence for about several seconds and then everybody burst into laughter, perhaps because it was 
therapeutic. therapeutic. Yeah. yeah, Patricia, you kind of agree, no? I, with that, yeah, I do agree, mm -hmm. but I, nobody should be put into jail for what they say. They should be put into jail for what they do. Anyway, we need to conclude uh, right. this uh, debate uh, here. Matthew, I don't know, I'm kind of, you know, um, it's hard for me to say this again to you because it can be painful, but I kind of agree with Patricia <laughs> again today. Yeah. So, um, so and you know what? It. It, it, this is the final day for you. Yeah, no, but today you had your last chance because today is our last face-off. So, oh. so, yeah, um, and that's not a joke. No. <laughs> that's not oh. a bad joke. Anyway. That's, um, 12, that's 12 attempts, isn't it? And I've lost yeah, every one. Yeah, I know. It's sad. It's yeah. sad. But um, yeah. you, I know you did uh, what you could. So we really appreciate <laughs> yeah, it. I did my best. I really enjoyed um, you. your arguments. But, uh, but anyway, um, I'll see you both next week at our special program. Can't wait. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Until next time. Yeah, thanks. And the show ends here, but we're still on the social networks. I remind you that you can follow us through the at uh, Weekly Mag TV. And like I just said, next week is our last The Weekly Mag of the season. It will be a very special program, so don't miss it. I leave you with a quote by one of the greatest comedians ever. I'm sure you all know him. And remember, keep your English up and running.